The talk that I'm going to give today focuses on women in art, and it starts with advertising. When I began my career in academia, connected to advertising, and I took a deep dive into Nike and Nike's creative women. So what took me there early on in the 1990s was their labor issues. So they were promoting themselves as the women's empowerment brand, and meanwhile, someplace over in Asia, um, they were using uh, women in factories. Needless to say, I got into Nike and I did a lot of interviews over the course of about three years. And I ended up talking to the two women who were predominantly in charge of doing the Nike women's advertising for the first 10 years, the amazing copywriter Janet Champ, and Charlotte Moore, and you can see a little bit about the things that they had to say about their experience. And their experiences were not pleasant. So at Nike, the women's brand got budgets that were about half of the budgets of the male brand, and yet everything they produced smashed any kind of goals that they were given. They had a deal with being marginalized, they had a deal with Phil Knight literally jumping up and down on tables and screaming at them, accusing them of pinkifying his brand. And so what consumers saw then and see today, women's empowerment, was and is not the world of creative women. So my experience with women both at Nike um, and other places sort of awakened in me something that I had really shut down because I didn't want to think about it. Um, and it was something um, that I experienced when I worked in the industry. And it involved things like a um, uh, door to a photographer's studio being locked from the inside and me not getting out until almost five hours later and somehow miraculously avoiding being raped. It involved a key being put on the table at a lunch with my biggest client at which point as I stood up and walked away from that table, I left on that table in the restaurant probably 40% of my income. And those are just two of the experiences that I had in the advertising industry. But I didn't talk about them. But they were bubbling in me after my experience with the women at Nike. And the reason I didn't talk about them is because I had a lot of shame around them. And that kind of behavior was normalized in the advertising industry. So I got into academia with this bubbling inside me after talking to Janet and Charlotte and learning their experiences, and I kept digging. In 2005, five years into my academic life, a creative director, the person who oversees the creative production and advertising, a creative director named Neil French outed himself in Toronto one evening in October of that year, and he said, Creative women's work is crap, and they don't make it to the top because they don't deserve to. And for three weeks, the industry press exploded talking about Neil French, and he was removed from his position, and I thought, hmm, maybe something's happening. And my experiences, those personal experiences, five years later are bubbling up again. And I'm thinking about Janet and Charlotte's story echoing in my head. And three weeks into it, the press goes silent once again. I decided that I wanted to talk to women in creative around the world because I wanted to prove Neil French wrong. And so I interviewed women all over the world. It was the women in Peru that really made my heart ache and my blood boil. As one Peruvian woman said, I feel not exist. So I was working with an RA who does qualitative work. I'm a quantitative person. Don't ask me to do statistics. And we used a database called Red Books. Red Books is an industry database. It's 100 years old. And we found out some pretty interesting results. But before I tell you that, I want you to think about the number 35. 35 is a really important percentage point to keep in your head throughout this presentation. So it's a number that indicates something called proportional representation. At 35%, any group of people who is less than the majority will begin to have agency. They'll begin to make some changes and be able to really shift things. 35% is a really important number. 
So when you get to 15%, you become a token. So if your group makes up less than 15%, you are basically invisible. Around the world, women in advertising in the creative department make up 23.5% of every creative in the world across 50 countries. And the people who supervise them are creative directors. Amongst that group of people, oh, they're about a point and a half above being tokens. A whopping 27.3% in the US, whoa, and almost 20% for creative directors. So there are five major advertising holding companies. So these five companies own 90% of the agencies around the world. In other words, these five holding companies have huge influence on the images that you see around the world. And they're owned and controlled in four major countries, in the US, in Britain, France, and Japan. And the reason women hit this glass wall and then a glass ceiling is because the environment is controlled by men. And there's lots of data that tell us people hire people like themselves. So white men hire more white men. I'm doing all this research, and another breaking point hits. Me Too goes viral. And at this point, I stopped being ashamed. I stopped hiding. The person who started it was an African-American woman, named Tara Burke. And she started a movement called Me Too, but she didn't put it out virally. And she started it in the African-American community 10 years before. But here's the question. What's a girl to do about all this stuff? Be a badass woman. And here are just a few ways you can be a badass woman in advertising. First, 2011, Kat Gordon, a truly amazing woman, starts something called the 3% movement. 3% refers to the number of creative directors who are award-winning creative directors. That's where she got her number from. And her movement started with focusing on gender equity, and she has since embraced diversity because she believes that diversity equals creativity equals profitability. Free the Bid, 2016. Alma Harrell created this, and basically, you can take the 3%, I mean, you can take the Free the Bid pledge, and what you are pledging is that every time you create a commercial, you're gonna get three bids, and one of those bids is going to be women or people of color. Every one of you sitting in here, you can make a difference, you can do something. You can be a badass woman, and the men in here, you can be allies to badass women. Let's see what's happening in film. Five years of data across 1,591 films from 2010 to 2015. Five years, the top 250 films, behind the scenes, everybody doing all of the things that make the films come to life. Women are barely above tokens. Yet, if you put just one woman producer on a film, and there are usually multiple, the numbers behind the scenes skyrocket. One woman producer who's behind the scenes as a writer, and boom, the numbers go hugely up. Just like with Nike, where they got little teeny budgets and were expected to do amazing things, anytime women are directors, producers, writers, or lead actors, the amount of money invested in their films is always less than when men are directors, producers, writers, or lead actors, always less. And with the exception of the time when they're directors, so let's just focus their producers, writers, or lead actors, they're getting less money to produce it, and guess what? Their ROI, their return on investment, is always higher. How about Oscar land? Let's see what happens there. In the last 10 years, 2006 to 2015, 10 years of gender and Oscar nomination, women are basically tokens. In 2019, there were 31% of the members of the Academy were women. 2018, 25%, that's a 6% jump, pretty nice. Uh, Within non-acting roles, 25% were nominated. That's a huge jump, that's good. Zero directors nominated. So, what's a girl to do? Be a badass woman. 
So of course we have Times of Hollywood that launched January 1st, 2018 and has certainly made a lot of noise and brought uh, a few people out of the woodwork and maybe to task. And then in February 2018, Frances McDormand won for best, her best, an Oscar for best actor. And when she was on stage, I don't know if any of you remember this, she asked the women of the Academy to rise. And so the 25% of the women who are part of the Academy rose. And then she said, I'm gonna leave you with two words, inclusion rider. And what she was saying was, women who have power need to say, I'm not gonna be a part of your film unless 25% of the people in the film are underrepresented people. So basically, you can't have me unless you let me raise others up with me. Women in the visual arts. Women have been historically excluded from artistic training and the structural systems that will allow them to succeed. They are precluded from becoming great artists because they are precluded from being part of the best galleries. They're precluded from being part of critic circles and we don't see them hanging in museums. It's not because they're not there and it's not because they're not great. First of all, here's the good news. 51% of living artists today are women. Yay, because 51% of the population is women. This is such great news, right? Among the most prominent art galleries across North America and Europe, women are less than 15% of the people who are exhibited in those galleries. So the most prominent galleries in North America and Europe, women are tokens. Among the 18 most prominent art museums in the US, women are tokens as well. 87% of the works hanging in those art museums are done by men. What's a girl to do? Be a badass woman. An anonymous group of feminist female artists started in New York, and still going strong today, and they wanted to bring gender and racial equities to light and into focus within the arts. 2016, number five women artists is launched, and there's all kinds of places to get a hold of them, as well as on Sam's website, I hear, so Sam is a big promoter, and you can take the pledge. And this evolves out of asking women, asking men, asking anyone you know, the simple question, can you name five women artists? Oftentimes they can't. It has been embraced by a thousand cultural institutions, over 10,000 individuals has jumped on in more than 50 countries. So it's not a surprise that Sam is on board. And the Spartanburg Art Museum. The last three years, this place rocks, let me tell you. 71 women, or 68% of the people this gallery, this museum has featured, have been women. Spartanburg Art Museum is a huge champion. I ask you to stand in your truth today inner dialogue really matters. So I want you to kind of go to your inner dialogue and I have three questions for you. How many of you can safely assume that you are paid less than men for doing the same work? How many of the women artists in the room, so how many artists do I have in the room? Okay, keep those hands up. How many of you still feel the struggle to be taken seriously. Oh, no hands went down, what a shock. <laughs> How many of you would like things to be different for the next generation? For boys, girls, women, and men? Me too. So, Let's make creative women everywhere. Thank you very much.